Hi, my name is John from Drive's Technical Service Department. Today I want to give you some basic program instruction to help you adapt a power chair to a client's needs. In this case, we'll be adjusting a power chair that is equipped with a PG controller. And the interface we'll be using is a PG PP1 programmer. Other brands are programmed very similarly to what we're going to be doing today. From the factory, the power chairs are programmed for most clients with average abilities and reflexes. Other variables can affect the performance, such as the weight of the client and the conditions of their surroundings, such as the flooring, the pitch of the floors, or ramps. Now, in the first example, we want to limit the top speed of the chair because the client is in a nursing home and drives too fast in crowded areas and could injure someone if the chair runs into them. For this tutorial, we're going to use this display board that we've made up as a teaching aid. And what it is, is basically a power chair with the electronics and the motors without the frame. In this case, it's a cobalt. On this configuration, we can plug the programmer into the charging port on the front of the joystick. When we turn on the joystick, the programmer will also turn on and you see here that it's reading turning speed. So using the yes and no arrows, we can scroll through the functions until we arrive at the function we need to adjust. As you can see on the joystick, there's an adjustment button that can set the speed from slower to faster, and you could step to a slower speed. The only problem with that is that the client in the nursing home can always hit the other buttons and speed back up, and we can have a dangerous situation happening again. So then we have to do it through the programming. So what we'll do is we'll scroll down to the maximum forward speed. And as we scroll down, we see forward speed. We hit enter and we see that it's set at 100%. So what we want to do is bring it down. In this case, let's go to about 70%. So we step the arrow down. And it's going and we hit the enter button and it says you chose 70 and now it says minimum forward speed. Now we want to also close that down because when you hit the slow button, it still would be a bit fast. So we want to lower that. We'll go to 30. And we hit enter. Okay. Now what you want to do is go to the reverse speed as we'll continue on reverse speed. And we see that it's saying 65 is the maximum reverse speed. So in this situation, 65 is going to be very fast. And we don't want a situation like that to be going on. So let's hit that down to about 45. Hit the Enter button. You chose 45. Now the minimum reverse speed, we want a bigger differential because 5% is not going to be very much. So let's go down to about 25. And we'll hit enter. And let's scroll down, turning speed. We also want to make it a little bit slower turning, otherwise it could whip around and hit somebody. So it's saying maximum turning speed is 55, which is kind of high. So let's go down to, say, 40. We hit enter. Now, minimum turning speed is 35. That's kind of high now. So let's go down to 25. And we hit enter. OK, turning speed, power. The other right now are not important. We just wanted to slow this thing down. Now, one thing, if you cut down the forward reverse or turning speeds, and the chair starts to load down or the forks start to bind when you're turning from side to side, you increase the acceleration for that function, which essentially is the torque. It helps you overcome the resistance 
of the forks as you turn from side to side. Now a word of caution, always test drive the chair before giving the chair back to the client to prevent a potentially dangerous condition from hurting someone. After testing the chair yourself, have the client drive the chair to see that the chair suits their needs and make any necessary adjustments before you leave.